So the place I want to start, as I always do, is is what things used to look like for you. So let's go back to your early days of, of your teaching. And what did your lesson planning process used to look like? And what problems did this lead to in the classroom? Yeah, so I think it's what I'd call a, it was, it was a task first approach or task oriented a, approach. So I would say, okay, I need to teach whatever. What card saw, enriched task, treasure hunt, investigation can I find that covers the sort of thing that, that I'm after? Oh, that looks good. That'll keep them busy. Um, right then, okay, well, what do I need to explain to try and get students to access this, this task then? And part of that will be the dynamics of the task and part of that will be a bit of the maths that's in the way as well and, and all of this stuff. Nothing against some of these tasks. Um, some of them are, uh, are where the maths can, can take center stage. Um, nothing I did prepared students to access them fully. Um, nothing, nothing put the maths front and center. I was all about finding a, a new task that had some, some novel element to it every single lesson. Um, but what ended up happening was that not only could students not access the task because the maths was in the way, they couldn't access the maths because the task was in the way. It, it was, yeah, nothing, nothing useful ended up happening. I, I, was, I had this mantra, you know, uh, again, it was coming from a good place, which was just naivety. I wanted, you know, to teach understanding and, and not, not teach in a, in, a, in a rote manner, as if that was like opposite to using a textbook or using just the same standard set of resources all the time. In reality, nothing, nothing connects the two. You can teach wonderfully with a textbook and you can teach poorly with it. You can teach wonderfully with an image task, you can teach poorly with it. Um, but I was just trying to find the most novel, fun, exciting thing I could that hid the maths away in the background somewhere. Um, yeah, never very successfully. And, and what, how did that play out in lessons? How, what kind of went wrong? How did, did you know it was going wrong at the time or is it only now looking back that it doesn't look oh, so good? God, no, I was, the, the more weird and wonderful the task I could find was, the happier I was about yeah, exactly. how the lesson went. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, well, look, I know, I know learning can't happen in one hour. So when these kids leave confused, I, I know when, when they go to sleep, it's probably going to embed in their heads that way. Or maybe at the weekend they'll have some sort of epiphany or, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're not learning, but they're having fun. And maybe they're, you know, it, I, I thought I was having a great time and, and I had so many excuses to justify my results not being as good as the teacher next to me that in hindsight was just an excuse for me to do the sort of teaching that I, I was enjoying the most rather than that which would be most effective for the for the students in front of me i was aligned to the data everything that that, that i should have been looking at um but i didn't have much of a, a compass to guide me elsewhere um, so yeah i look back with with regret but also I can understand why it happened. That's fascinating. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a good opportunity for me to kind of unburden all my mistakes I've made with, with lesson planning. <laughs> now, again, I'll just go through it, Craig. I, I've, I've, I've narrowed it down to four. It could have been 40. I'll say each of them, and then if you want to reflect on any of them at the end, feel feel free, or if you just want to hang your head in shame, that, that's fine as well. <laughs> so, so first thing is, writing at number one was exactly what you've described. The brighter, the shinier, the better. If it involves scissors, even better. Glue, that <laughs> yeah. couldn't get better than that. Um, Bit more controversially, um, if people were in a group, even better because they could be learning. For, you know, all those kind of ticking all the kind of cliche boxes. So I was all I was all over that, and I think you described it really well. Task focused. It might it would start with the shiniest task I could find. Then let's in fact let's not even worry about what they're going to learn. Let, let's just do the task, and, and everyone's happy with that. So that's error number one, which is similar, perhaps a more extreme version of, of what you described. But I think I did three other things that 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 um, that were, were errors. Looking back. So the first is, even when I find found one of these bright, shiny tasks, I never did it first myself, which is always problematic. So I'd have a little glance at it and think, well, that's fine. You know, I can see how to do it, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd turn up in the classroom and they'd guarantee there's a little sort of twist in there that I've not spotted or a mistake in there, right? Because I'm not, you know, it's been created yeah. by the teacher or whatever, and it just derailed the whole operation. Um, I even do this, I've done this fairly recently. I love a bit of Dr. Frost's um, maths PowerPoint, but there's some stinkers of questions on there. And I think, yeah, I'll figure that out in the lesson. And I put it on the board and, I, and then the kids are like, I'm stuck on this. I'm thinking I'm stuck on that as well. And that can be, that can be problematic. So not doing the task first will be error number two. Um, error number three. And I think 
this is kind of the next level from this. And I, I, I really try and make a point of this when I'm lucky enough to do CPD, particularly on tasks, is it's one thing doing the task yourself as a mathematician, but I think you need to take a step back from the task and think about what this is going to look like for your students. Think about the pedagogy of it. And what I've done in the past is I've, I've attended CPD or I feel like found an enriched task or something. And I thought, right, I'll do this myself. And I'm loving it. I'm loving the twists. I'm loving the turns. I'm having a great time. But I'm a massive nerd. I'm a massive geek. And then I go <laughs> into, you know, year eight or whatever. I give them like, what the hell is this? They're, they're not seeing the connection. They're not enjoying it because I've not taken that step back to think of about pedagogy. So I think that's another one. And then the last thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll recap these and I'll shut up and let you reflect is, and this I think is maybe the most controversial one. I think I was guilty in the past of having loads of different task structures. So for every lesson I would have, or every topic, a different task structure. So I'd have my favorite task for Pythagoras, my favorite task for sharing in ratio, my favorite task for you know, surface area, whatever it may be. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it did mean that a lot of lesson time was spent explaining the structure. And I think a lot of kids' attention was on trying to understand the structure of the task and therefore less time and attention on actually thinking about the mathematics and learning from it. So there's my big four. I'll recap them. Bright and shiny ones, not doing the task first myself, doing the task first, but not thinking about the pedagogy, and then having a big kind of spread of variety of task structures instead of kind of a couple of kind of high value ones. And any thoughts on any of that, Craig? Oh, just horrible flashbacks. Um, <laughs> yeah, all, all of those things. I think... One, one more, I, I think I want to add this yeah, talk, isn't it? We just add all no, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> which is um, not having the end goal in mind of, let's, let's say Pythagoras' theorem is coming up. Mm. I would look at it and go, right, okay, we need to work with a triangle. And not, not look at the exam, not look at all the ways mm. it's been assessed in the past. Mm. Okay, it's combined with this and it's used with that. I would get, a, can you use Pythagoras' theorem? to find the hypotenuse or a shorter side. Great, let's draw a line under that, job done. Never mind all the challenging ways it comes up in an exam. Yeah. And then when they sit a paper or a mark and say, so you never taught us that? Oh, I did, you just have to, think you see the trick? Just yeah. do that, then that, yeah. then that, then that, then that. And I never exposed them to, to those either. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bad it's... times. Bad times. Well, yeah. this is the yeah. low. If this was a movie, this podcast, Craig, this is the low point of the movie. <laughs> now we're going to we're going to turn we're going to turn the corner now. We, you've got to go through these lows to to appreciate the highs. So. Here...